past Tuesday was New York's primary, and it was a big win. A big win for plutocracy. Plutocracy is kicking ass. It really is. Plutocracy's doing quite well this round. I was, I was surprised. I was pleasantly surprised. If you watch the mainstream media, then you know Bernie Sanders is not just a giant loser, but he also, he also should have honor killed himself a long time ago. <laughs> If he doesn't have a chance to get the nomination, what is he accomplishing? Nicole? Sanders is to me as an outsider, like you said, yeah. this shiny object. We're so mesmerized by the power of his connection to those 28,000 person crowds that you know, if this was a Republican race, it would be over by now. We, we, we would have moved on. But because he is so mesmerizing to this beautiful sort of crop of diverse young voters, we keep talking about him. He has no chance of being the Democratic nominee. Yes, why are we even talking about him? He's won eight of the last 10 contests, but MSNBC will let you know, Bernie Sanders should eat a bag of <laughs> He really should. I mean, Hillary wiped the map with him in New York. Look at this map of New York. Bernie only won everything in green, which is all of the New York. <laughs> But he did lose New York City, which is where most of the state's population is. And New York City hates him. They hate him, as we saw the other day in Manhattan. <laughs> they all showed up to boo. It's terrible. It's terrible. So why did Bernie lose? To begin with, it was a closed primary. So more than 3 million people, about 27% of the voters, were registered outside the Republican and Democratic primaries. I mean, sorry, parties. They even filed a lawsuit to try to get those voting rights back. But that's not all. The New York City Board of Elections purged 126,000 likely Bernie voters from the rolls in Brooklyn, a drop of 14%. But that's not all. <laughs> the attorney general announced an investigation into the primary fiasco after his office received a 368% increase in complaints Whoa. compared to 2012. But that's not all. <laughs> Polling sites in many counties, especially ones where Bernie was favored, decided to open at noon instead of 6 a.m. like usual. Because whoever votes on their way to work, right? I mean, if you're like me, you get real liquored up. Then you stumble, you stumble into the voting booth around 9 or 10 p.m. You relieve yourself on the ballot and call it a night. But, but that's not all. The New York City Board of Elections, according to the New York Times, mailed 43,000 postcards to new voters, informing them that the date for the primary is in September. And you know who new voters are likely to vote for? Bernie Sanders. But even the Board of Elections said, don't worry, it's not a conspiracy, we're just incompetent. <laughs> but if you noticed, all this incompetence goes in favor of the establishment candidates, in favor of Hillary Clinton. You never hear an elections official go, whoops, we accidentally allowed 50,000 extra people to vote. <laughs> <laughs> all those independents had their voices heard. But that's not all. We also reported a couple weeks ago on the massive impact Google can have on the election and how they're in bed with Hillary Clinton. Well, God, all this crazy voter suppression. Do you think the mainstream media is starting to catch on? What I find most interesting is that there has not been a relationship between the crowd size and the donations and the math. That is most interesting, <laughs> that crowd size has not equaled voting numbers. Jesus Christ, watching these guys is like watching blind gerbils try and find their way out of Bill O'Reilly's butt. I mean, I, I heard he's into that. Anyway, let's go to Chris Matthews, who has put on his thinking cap. 
<laughs> well, I think I think it's still going to be. Hold on, hold on. Did I say thinking cap? I meant child's cap. Three sizes too small for his massive head. And do you really want a sign across your head that says a hard ball? I mean, if you're trying to move the hard ball hats. Putting the lollipop guild size on Chris's grotesquely swollen noggin, not the way to do it. Well, I think I think it's still going to be a, a very asymmetric general election if it's Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. An asymmetric general election? Oh, I think on the asymmetric, both Trump and Hillary are through the roof. Speaking. Speaking of high ratings on the ass metric, let's go to Chuck Todd. Sanders is at an interesting moment right now. He does have a lot of power if he uses it correctly. But if he goes after her too hard, she is not going to feel the need to sort of have an open, uh, open arms to him. Yes, Chuck. All this time, Bernie Sanders has just been positioning himself to get into the waiting arms of Queen Hillary Clinton, which I hear smells like the breath of an ancient sea monster and cinnamon sticks. <laughs> See, she, Chuck Todd doesn't realize it, but he just admitted accidentally how he views his entire career. You do whatever you need to in order to continually be accepted into the loving arms of the power elite. Look, New York actually showed us that this is not over because it's likely neither Clinton nor Sanders will get to the magic delegate number before the convention. That's A. B, because Hillary could be indicted any day for all kinds of shit. <laughs> and finally, because I and millions of others don't give a flying f about your delegate count or your rigged votes. This is not about Bernie. It's about a movement, a movement with ideas that don't have a map or a timeline or an expiration date. They just are. And they will continue to be until we pull this country and this world back from the clutches of the egomaniacal millionaire sociopaths. Coming to you from Washington, D.C., the belly to be.